this morning, I, I am going to do a two-part message. I start uh, this week. I will continue next week. And I have titled it, Faith to Become. Faith to Become. Many times we associate faith with praying to receive answers from God. So when we talk about faith, we are always thinking about receiving something from God. And it's true, faith can be used in prayer to receive something from God. But faith can also be used in another way, not to receive something from God, but to become something. And, and that is what I'm going to focus on between this week and next week. And my text, my primary text is from the book of Romans, chapter 4 and verses 16 to 21. And Romans chapter 4 uh, is making a reference to the life of Abraham. And it gives us some indication as to Abraham's faith and how it worked. And I want you to pay attention to the reading of God's word. Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Abraham did not simply pray to receive something from God. He prayed to become something for God. So the verse 18 says, he believed so that he became. He believed so that he became. He didn't just believe to receive. He believed to become. And that is a very interesting uh, observation that we have, can have faith to receive something from God, but we can also have faith to become something for God. The word become is from a root word that means to be made, to be made or to turn into something to be made or to be turned into. So when we say that somebody has faith to become, it means they have faith to be turned into something else or faith to be made into something else. Abraham used his faith to be made into another person. He was turned from one state to the other. And there is a big difference between using your faith to receive something from God and using your faith to become something. There is a difference between using your faith to receive forgiveness of sins and using your faith to become the righteousness of God. Two different things. There is a difference between using your faith to receive healing from sickness and using your faith to become healthy. Many times when people are using their faith, they are using their faith for God to heal them from a sickness that's receiving something. But we can also use the faith to become 
healthy. That is, you don't get sick. Two different things. There is a difference between using your faith to prosper and using your faith to become prosperous. A person who uses the faith to prosper will prosper on and off. But a person who becomes prosperous doesn't prosper on and off. It's constantly in a state of prosperity. Faith is not just about receiving, but faith is also about becoming. Somebody say, I will become. So when we receive, we, re we use our faith to receive, we receive something, but what I'm talking about is becoming something. So when you look at Abraham and his faith, your mind tells you Abraham was believing God for a child, Isaac. But the passage says Abraham was not believing God for a child. He was believing God to become a father of many nations. It's two different things. If you believe in God for Isaac, you only get Isaac. If you believe in God to become a father of many nations, you get more than Isaac. And today, I just want you to know, God doesn't just want to give you something. He wants you to become somebody. Somebody say, I will become. So, Abraham's eyes were not only on receiving a son. He wanted to become a father. No wonder, if you read the story of Abraham, after Sarah died in Genesis chapter 25, Abraham married again. At this time, he would be over 100 years, about 125 years, and he had six sons extra. Why? Because his eye was not on receiving one son. His eye was on becoming a father of many nations. In all, he believed God and his faith made him become. Somebody say, I will become. So, each one of us has a prayer point. And... Uh, I don't know what your prayer is. Maybe you are praying that God will heal you because you are sick. Maybe you are believing that God will prosper you because you are broke. Maybe you are believing that God will uh, give you a husband because you are single. Or God will give you a wife because you are single too. But for a moment, I want you to think about this. That the God who can give you can also make you become. He doesn't just want to give you healing. He wants you to be healthy. He doesn't want to give you just money. He wants you to be prosperous. He doesn't just want to give you a breakthrough. He wants you to be mighty. He wants you to become. Somebody say, I will become. So let's look at the life of Abraham a bit close. First, look at who Abraham was at the time that God appeared to him and spoke to him. This is what Abraham was. This is what life had made him. This is what his experiences had made him. And each one of us have something that life has made us. Life can be very brutal, you know. Life can be very, very, very brutal. And it can make you something that you don't want to be. And in Abraham's case, life had made him old. That's the first thing. He was old. Time was against him. It seemed as if the window of opportunity for life had been shut, shut on him. It's a scary thing to wake up one day and just realize that time is against you. Just to realize that time has passed you by and you don't have time. Especially when you think, oh, I can do something and you say, oh, when I'm I'm 40 years, by 40 I would have done this. And then you look back and you are 70. 40 has gone 30 years ago. And what you wanted to do at 40, you haven't done at 70. At that time, you say time is against you. That was Abraham's case. He was old. Time was against him. The second thing uh, the passage says is that Abraham's body was dead. His body was dead, dead in inverted commas. That means although he was physically alive, he was not energetic. He didn't have the same strength, 
They didn't have the same vigor. They didn't have the same energy. Not the same body he had when he was younger. And he had no child. He had not fathered a child. And so this is what life had made him. And I don't know what life has also made you, if you're listening to me. Maybe you also feel you are old. Time has run out for you. Probably when you were 23 years old, you were so very hopeful of life. And now you're looking at yourself and you are 67 or 65 or 55. And you are wondering, time has passed me by. And I didn't even notice it. I remember talking to somebody who was 80 years old. And I said, how do you feel at 80? He said, pastor, you know, one day you are young. And then they tell you you are 80. It's almost as if <laughs> you don't notice it. And time catches up. So Abraham is in this situation where all of a sudden he realizes, I'm old. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe for some of you, life has made you bitter. You're angry with yourself. You're angry with people you think haven't treated you well. They've cheated you. You feel weak like Abraham. You feel dead. You feel unenergetic. You feel uninspired. And nothing is coming out of you. Life is almost becoming a regret. Or you feel insecure. You are so scared about the future. Or you feel sick or sad. Or a failure or poor. Life has a way of damaging all of us. It hits us. Time goes against us. Things don't work out well. This was where Abraham was. In the midst of what life had made Abraham, God comes to Abraham and God gives him a promise. And the promise that God gave to him said, I have made you the father of many nations. God didn't say, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. That's not what he said. We think that is what he said. We think God said, I will give you a son. God didn't say that. God says, I have made you the father of many nations. Now, when God says made in the original language, the word made means to set in place or to arrange for something to happen. So, you are old. Time is against you. Nothing is working for you, but I have set things in motion for you to become a father of many nations. I don't know about you, but I believe that God has made you. He has set things in motion. He has put plans in place for you to become. Somebody say, I will become. So in essence, what God is saying to Abraham is, I have put in place all that is required for you to become a father of many nations. It, he didn't say, I will do it simply for you, but I have made you, I have set it in place. I, I have put everything required in place for you. So Abraham is going to play a role. Now, if you read the original promise that Romans chapter 4 is quoting, if you read it in Genesis chapter 14, uh, verse, uh, Genesis 17, verses 4 to 6, I want you to listen carefully to what God says. There are three verses, and each verse, God says something different in each verse. Verse 4, as for me, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Verse 6, I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come of you. I want you to note the sequence of the message he's receiving. Verse 4. You shall be, it's future tense, you shall be a father of many nations. This is God's plan. He says, Abraham, this is what you will be. You shall be a father of many nations. God wants you to become, God wanted Abraham to be somebody, to be 
something. Somebody say, I will be. Then in verse 5, in verse 6, he says, you shall be future tense. In verse 5, in verse 4, you shall be future tense. Verse 6, I have made you past tense. I have made you. It's past. In other words, you will be because I have made you. Your destiny is in the future, but my assignment has already occurred in the past. I have made you the father of many nations, and you shall be in the future. Verse 6, I will make you. It's a continuous tense. So, there are three tenses that Abraham is living in. First, God says, I have made you past. So you will be in your future. And from now till your future, I will make you. So there is a process God is going to take you through. There is something he's established in the past. And there is something you're going to be in the future. There is a future for you. It is settled in the past. And God is taking you in the process. You shall be. Somebody say, I shall be. I don't know whether that's good English or not, but it, that is good faith. Say, I shall be because I have been made. That's what God says. I have made you so you shall be and I will make you exceedingly fruitful. How are you going to be the father of many nations? I will make you exceedingly fruitful. So there is a process of exceedingly fruitful that is going to end up in Abraham becoming the father of many nations. But it's all based on the fact that God has already made him. I have made you the father of many nations. God doesn't just want to give you trickles of blessing. He wants to make you a blessing. He doesn't just want you to receive a blessing. He wants to make you blessed. He doesn't want to just promote you. He wants to make you the head. He doesn't just want to give you healing. He wants to make you healthy. I have made you. And because of that, you shall be. So, now Abraham has two things he has to deal with. What life has made him He's old, time is past, time is against him, his body is dead, he has no child. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two, I have made you and you shall be and I will continuously make you fruitful. Scenario number two, Abraham has two options. Either to say, hmm, I've heard what you are saying, oh, but look at me. I still have no child. I'm still old. I'm going nowhere. But that's not what he did. Between the two options, he chose one. So let us look at whom Abraham believed. Either he believed himself or he believed God. At every point, you have to choose whom to believe. You either believe what life has made you or you believe what God has made you. And the passage says, and Abraham believed God. He fixed his faith on God. As the one who revives what is dead, he gives life to the dead, and he calls the things which do not exist as though they exist. He brings non-existence things into existence. He believed God. He believed God. There is something God has made you that you must become. Maybe all your mind is fixed on, oh God, give me this, oh God, give me that, and go, oh God, give me that. And you're looking at items. When God is looking at personhood, your personality, he wants to make you something. When God makes you the head, nobody can bring you down. 
When God makes you prosperous, pros poverty will be afraid of you. When God makes you healthy, sickness runs away from you. But if all you're doing is believing God for one item at a time, one child at a time, it's going to take you a long time in your journey. But when you believe God to be a father, then having children becomes normal. Having children becomes normal. That, that's what God is saying to Abraham. I don't want to, you to just believe at every point for one item at a time. I want you to be believe to become something so that out of what you have become you will produce everything that is needed at every phase. So Abraham believed God and let us look at what Abraham did. The Bible says who contrary to hope believed in hope. Contrary to hope simply means when it was hopeless he had hope. When it was hopeless he had hope. When it was hopeless, she had hope. Can you say when it was hopeless, I had hope? In other words, when the case was bad, 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 Abraham decided, I still trust God. I will be the father of many nations. I will be. I don't have a child now. I will be. So, by some method, he had the first one, Ishmael. And he said, well, maybe I'm the father of many nations now. God said, no, no, that's not it. Sarah is going to produce one. See, I thought, you know, hey, guys, young, it's an easier miracle to believe. God says, no, Sarah, the old lady. When you are old and, and your miracle includes an old person, you must have hope. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Contrary to hope, you must have hope. So Sarah has a child. But God didn't say, I will give you two children. He says, I will make you the father of many nations. Two children is not nations. So Sarah dies. And Abraham said, well, I am still, I have become the father of many nations, he went to marry again. Keturah. I'm sure she was a younger person. Six sons. Six. Abraham, what happened? You couldn't even believe for one. Now you are producing six. Why? Because he has become. When you become what you couldn't receive as an individual, you are able to produce in sequence. May God cause you to become. Not just to receive prosperity. Not just to receive abundance. Not just to receive healing. But to become healthy. And Abraham became the father of many nations. According to the word of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I just feel to encourage somebody. That God wants you to become. You must become great. You must become mighty. You must become strong. You must become blessed. A blessed person so the blessing will follow you you must be the head you must be highly favored you must be abundant so that you can receive abundance there is faith to receive one thing from God and there is also faith to become something for God and if you trust God to make you become, then it is very easy for you to receive. So today I ask you, what do you want to become? What do you want to become? Not what do you want God to do for you, but what do you want to become? Do you want to be a blessing to your generation? Do you want to be influential 
For Abraham, he became the father of many nations. The nations that came out of his children and his children's children. Ishmael's descendants, many nations. Isaac's descendants, we know them, Israel. But the six other boys, they also became nations. And for your information, most of them became African nations. For all you know, you are one of them. Because Keturah was a black woman. And she produced those children, six. So from Abraham, you had the nations from Ish Ishmael, from Isaac, and from Keturah. And their children, and their children's children. If you look at the sequence, truly, he became the father of many nations. And not only physical nations, but spiritual nations as well. Because the Bible says those who are of faith in Christ, they are the children of Abraham. So if you look at it, in every nation of this world, there is a child of Abraham in that nation. In every continent, on every island, in every place, there is a descendant of Abraham, either a physical descendant or a spiritual descendant. And all because he moved from believing God for a thing to believing God to become. And when he became, then things started flowing out of him. Blessing flowed out of him. Abundance flowed out of him. Children flowed out of him. It touches children. It touches children's children. It touches generations after him because he has become. When you become, nobody can change your status any longer. You become that for the glory of God. So I don't know what you want to become today. Maybe you want to become what? A mother of many nations? A father of many nations? What do you want to become? And think about it as we go to prayer. But as we get ready to pray, there is something else you must become. A man came to Jesus Christ and uh, came to Jesus at night. He's called Nicodemus and he started talking to Jesus and said, Jesus, you are a great man. You are a great teacher. Nobody can do the things that you do. And Jesus said, except a man becomes born again. Not just have your sins forgiving. It's possible to have your sins forgiving and not become born again. Except a man becomes born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So this morning, some of you need to become children of God. You need to be born again. Not just have your sins forgiven. Not just go to church. Not just love God. Not just for God to love you. But you must be in actuality a child of God. So whilst we are praying and talking to God. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ and be born again. Just talk to God and say, Lord, I want to be your child. Not just forgive me my sins, but I want to be your child. And, and we trust God that this morning, you will become born again. And if you are believing God for anything else, may the Lord cause you to become. In Jesus' name. Let's say this prayer together wherever you are watching me, listening to me, in the hall, out there on, on the TV set, on radio, online. Just say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus died for me. He is the Son of God. And I believe in him as my Savior, as my Redeemer, to become a child of God. And I believe in Christ for salvation, total salvation. I believe in Christ for healing and for health, let me be healthy. Let me prosper. Let me be prosperous. Let me go ahead. Let me be the head. I declare today, I am blessed of God. I am favored of God. I am the head and not the tail. I am the apple of God's eye. And I receive today to be whom God says I am, 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you truly believe you receive that, why don't you give God some praise wherever you are and thank him that you are who he says you are. You haven't just received something, you have become. I am blessed and nobody can change it. I am favored and nobody can change. They may hate you, they may fight you, they may criticize you, but when you are blessed, it is irrevocable, it is immutable because it is your nature for blessing to flow out of you. And you are one of those people. You are blessed and you can't help it, but blessing will flow out of you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Mm -hmm.